So this is how to get the best home solar panel installation experience, the ultimate beginner's guide. Hey there, homeowner. My name's Rich. I'm from Solar Microscope. And my simple YouTube ads for solar have been viewed over two and a half billion times. I've personally helped over two million homeowners get a quote and a customized proposal and design for their home. Now, I personally don't sell solar, so you won't hear a sales pitch from me, but I help educate homeowners like you so you can look under the microscope of solar and decide if it's the right fit for you and your family to save money. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete beginner's guide to learning how solar panels work, how much they can save you, and what to look out for before deciding if you want to obtain solar panels for your home. You've all heard the old saying, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. In the same way, those who don't know about the horror stories some homeowners have experienced with solar panels are doomed to make the same mistakes. Now, I should say that 95% of people who obtain solar panels love them. They don't regret the decision whatsoever, but it's important to learn from the three to 5% who have had a bad experience to make sure you don't fall prey to the same result. So what are some of the most common mistakes to avoid when looking into solar panels for your home? Number one, not understanding what you're getting. Make sure you watch more of my videos so you really understand how solar panels work and the different ways you can obtain solar. Deciding whether you want to lease the panels or own the panels is a good start. If you're older and retired and have no taxable income, then you may not want to own or finance the panels because number one, you can't take advantage of the federal tax credit. And number two, you may not be staying in your home long term or may pass on the debt to your heirs. If you're still working and expect to pay taxes the year you get solar, then owning the solar panels may be a better decision if you plan on staying in your home. And that brings us to our second point, which is number two, not planning on staying in your home for at least five to seven years. If you don't plan on keeping your house for that long, then solar may not be a good fit for you. Although you can experience immediate savings in the first month in most cases, if the real estate market were to take a downturn and then you sell your house at an inopportune time, then what can happen is the next homeowner in your house will benefit more from the solar panels than you, since you'll have to pay off the balance of your solar panels at the point of sale. I and mean, the third thing is not giving 12 months of energy use to your solar designer. A common mistake homeowners make is that they only share one or two months worth of electric bills with their solar designer. Many good solar consultants will not even provide a design if they don't have 12 months worth of history of your energy usage, because this is such a huge factor. If you don't share all of the relevant data regarding your energy usage with your solar consultant, it's possible that they may install too many or too few solar panels on your home. Too many means it will reduce your savings potential, and too few means you won't offset your entire electric bill. I mean, the fourth thing is you want to make sure that the solar installation company that you're using has a good track record and will stay in business. Some solar companies are local, and that may be a factor when making your decision, but I don't think it's as important as knowing the company has done a good amount of installs in your state, at least 300 to 500 at a minimum. And make sure you choose a company that has a phenomenal warranty as well. I've heard really good things about Solar Insure, which is a company that many solar companies use to extend panel and inverter warranties beyond the normal 10 or 25 year timelines. They also cover in the event of roof penetration, which is a good thing to consider in case your roof ever gets damaged. They also have a phenomenal customer service department who can answer most questions for you after the solar is installed. And if the solar company ever goes out of business, which has happened before, they'll continue to service your panels. And then the fifth thing is you wanna make sure that you don't overuse energy after the solar is installed. Many homeowners don't realize that their solar system was designed based on their current 12 month energy usage. So if you install a pool after you get solar, then obviously the amount of energy your home will consume is gonna go up significantly. So you'll need to add more panels later to offset the increased amount of energy usage. Even something not as drastic, like for instance, if you use to not use appliances or lights during the day, but now you work from home, your energy usage will probably go up. Many homeowners think that the solar panels stopped working after a number of years, but what they don't realize is that they just started consuming more energy. Just because your solar panels greatly reduced or even eliminated your electric bill, don't forget to turn off your lights when you're not using them or to unplug unnecessary appliances. Use LED lights to reduce your energy consumption. Don't start overusing energy just because you think you can. I mean, the next question you should ask is, how do you find a reliable installer when it comes to getting solar panels installed in your home? There are a lot of factors you want to consider before choosing a company. The first thing is to find out how many installs they've done in the past. Some solar companies are local, but you know, the, the important thing is you want to find someone who's done 300 to 500 installs at a minimum. And then another thing is when it comes to, you know, warranties, nearly all solar companies offer their panels with a 20 or 25 year manufacturer's warranty and the solar inverters come with a 10 year warranty. If you've already started exploring your inverter options, you may have noticed that some products come with a 25 year warranty, but don't get fooled by that. Simply comparing the length of one warranty term to the next doesn't really 
generally give you a full picture. What is and what isn't included in a warranty differs quite a bit from one inverter company to the next. And considering how important a solar inverter is to the functionality of your system, you want to make sure you're covered in case anything goes wrong. An inverter is basically the technology that transfers the power that gets generated by the panels into usable electricity for your home. Oftentimes, warranties sometimes exclude certain aspects, like for instance, whether workmanship or labor is covered in case something goes wrong. So you want to check that too. Now, solar companies are infamous for installing. And then anytime you call them afterwards, it's tough to get a hold of someone. So sometimes it's best to use an independent solar consultant who you can continue to maintain a relationship with after the installation is complete. So then you can know you have someone you can call if you have any concerns. Going straight to an installation company directly can sometimes be less expensive, but quality customer service is definitely something worth considering. For instance, Tesla Solar is known for being the lowest cost solar panels you can get for your home, but their customer service is known as the worst as the, in the industry. When I bought my rental property, it came with a Tesla Solar system and it was extremely difficult to get a hold of the technical support team when something went wrong. So going with an independent solar consultant who can help you make your best choices among a variety of installers and products is worth its weight in gold when you need help later on. That's an additional cost that's actually worth it, in my opinion. I mean, the next thing you want to consider is how much can solar panels really save me? For my first house, I saved about $80 a month with a power purchase agreement and the solar was totally free. I didn't have to pay for the panels. I just paid for a cheaper rate of power. On my second house, I bought the solar panels with low interest financing and immediately started saving between $300 to $500 per month. On my rental property, like I told you about before, the tenants save approximately $150 to $300 per month on their bill. So can you see the same types of savings? If you qualify for solar, then yes, you most likely can. So how do you qualify? A certified solar engineer can design a system for your home fairly quickly, and it can estimate the approximate savings you can expect. Many things go into these designs. For instance, number one, the angle of your roof. The angle of your roof will determine how much DC energy the panels can capture from the sun. And actually, a study was done in England where they measured different angles for rooftop solar. The technical term for this is called azimuth. Imagine dropping a basketball on the top of your roof. The azimuth will determine how quickly that basketball rolls off your roof onto the ground based in degrees. Now, the optimal azimuth angle for solar installations is observed to be, you know, between positive two degrees and negative four degrees, whereas, you know, more steep angles are not as great for getting solar panels. I mean, the second thing is, is which direction do your solar panels face compared to the sun? For best results, your solar panels should face toward the equator. So if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, like everyone in America does, you want to face your panels south. So if there's room on your roof or in your backyard to place the solar panels south facing, that's the ideal direction to face your, your solar panels. I and mean, then the third thing is, is how much energy you consume on an annual basis. So your annual energy consumption, which we talked about before, will determine how much energy you need to produce through your solar panels to achieve net metering. So what is net metering? Net metering is a technical term which helps you offset the majority or the entirety of your electric bill minus connection or other utility fees. And then this begs the question is like, how many panels should you get? So when you figure out your annual energy consumption, a solar engineer can then help you determine how many panels you'll need to achieve net metering for your home. And then when it comes to those panels, you want to find out how strong they are, how much wattage is associated with those panels, because that'll determine how much energy they can produce for your home. So panels vary in strength and in cost. So it's important to make sure you get tier one panels, which are the highest quality and have the highest strength based on current technology. I mean, the last thing is to consider on how much you could potentially save is whether you utilize a battery backup system or not. Many homeowners can benefit from adding a battery backup to their home. This way, the energy that's produced by the solar system, it doesn't only go straight to the electric grid, but first is stored in your battery so you can power your home at night or in the winter when solar panel production is lower. A battery backup can also help you keep the lights on if there's an energy outage and the grid becomes disconnected from your home. Also, some utility companies in warm climates like California and Arizona, they have a utility policy known as time of use. Time of use means that the electric company can actually charge you more for power during certain hours of the day when everyone's using it the most. You want to be careful of that and utilizing a battery backup system can help prevent you pay those uh, high rates. 
So those are really the six most important factors which determine how much you can potentially save with solar panels on your home. And many homeowners in certain states save up to 50% or more on their monthly bills without spending anything up front to get started. So if you're paying $200 per month to the electric company now, you may be able to only pay $100 per solar per month and use the same amount of power. See one of my other videos for more information on how to get solar at no cost up front or even potentially for free. In other states, you may not realize as much savings right away. In certain states where electricity is cheaper, you may be able to lock in a lower amount of monthly savings, but benefit from never seeing your costs go up. So even if you only save 50 or $60 a month, it still makes sense because if the electric company is raising their rates every year, and this year they've already gone up 15% nationwide, and some areas, some states, some locations are forecasted to increase them by 30% or even 50% in 2023. That will protect you from future increases if you go solar. So over time, it's really common for homeowners to save 25,000, 50, 75, 100, even $150,000 over the lifetime of having their 25 year solar panel system. But the most important thing to learn about solar before you decided to add to your home is that it's not super expensive like most people think. Do you have to spend any extra money in order to get solar? The biggest question people usually have about solar panels is they're confused about how they can get the solar panels for free. Is that true? Or is it just a misleading advertising tactic? Can you really get solar panels for free? So I'm here to tell you that yes, solar is free and no, solar is not free at the same time. So you might be thinking, wait, what? How is that possible? How is it free and not free at the same time? Well, the answer to this question is really twofold. Number one, it depends on how you obtain solar. And number two, it's really asking, what do you mean by free? So let's cover the first one first. The question is, is solar free? And the answer is, it depends how you get it. So solar panels can be offered a variety of ways. I have personally had solar on my houses for the last 10 years, and I've experienced solar on two different homes of mine in two distinct ways. Number one, my first house I ever owned, I got solar panels through what is known as a PPA or power purchase agreement is what that stands for. Sometimes this is called leasing solar, which is the opposite of owning solar. Similar to leasing a car rather than owning a car. In a power purchase agreement, you agree to not pay a dime for the solar panels at all. In that sense, the panels really are free. Instead, you agree to pay the company that installed the solar panels a cheaper rate of power. So you get to benefit from all the the cheaper electricity from solar panels, but you don't have to actually dish out any money or finance the panels whatsoever. So in my situation, I was paying on average $200 a month on my electric bill on my first house. My new bill to the solar company was $120 a month, but I didn't own the solar panels. I didn't have to pay for them. I was leasing them in order to save $80 per month. I didn't have to finance them or pay anything for them. I just experienced immediate savings. And it was a super simple process. So in that sense, solar really is free in that situation. It was even easy to sell that first house because the new owner just took over the agreement and we actually sold the house for more money because the owner liked that it already had solar. My realtor said that I should list my house for $30,000 less than what I listed it for. And I said, no, we have solar. I want to list it at this price. And we had someone come in right at the list price and pay full price. So sometimes you don't want to listen to your realtor. They don't think that uh, the solar is actually going to increase the value of your home because it really does. Now on my second house, I paid for the solar panels and owned them outright. In that sense, solar was not free in that circumstance. But my electric bill was previously between 500 and $700 per month. Now, the reason it was so high in that house is because we had a pool and we had four air conditioners. Now I pay about $200 per month for the solar panels. So what that means is I'm experiencing about a $200 a month savings in the winter and a $500 a month savings in the summer immediately right after I got the solar panels installed. Not bad. And it was also a super simple process. If I ever decide to sell my current house, I can get a higher price for it because the solar panels will be owned by the new homeowner. But the question is, is solar really free? What we're really asking is a different type of question. And this is the second point. When most people ask, is solar really free? What they're really asking is, do I have to pay for solar before I start experiencing the benefits of solar savings? And the answer to that question is no. 99% of solar companies offer flexible, low interest financing for the solar panels, so you don't have to come out of pocket at all to get solar. So it's $0 down, zero out of pocket, not a penny has to come out of your pocket. And once the solar system is turned on, 
your electric bill will mostly be reduced to nothing and the payment for the solar panels will be less than what you paid to the utility company. So think about it. If you pay $200 per month right now to your electric company and your new solar payment is $100 per month, you're immediately saving $100 per month without spending a dime out of pocket. Is that free? Well, in one sense, yes, it is. It's actually better than free because you're pocketing $100 a month you didn't have before. And every month that goes by, you'll save even more because the electric company's rates as they're raising them, you're not gonna be subject to those increased rates because your power is being produced by your solar. And in another sense, no, solar is not free. You still have to make the $100 per month payment. But after a number of years, those payments will be over and then your energy consumption will be completely free. So I hope this video helped you understand how in one sense solar is not free, but in another sense it is. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So in that sense, it's basically free to you. You immediately start saving in month one. And actually it's better than free because most homeowners immediately get that money back in their pocket right away. And if you lease solar, you don't have to pay anything for solar in that situation. It's 100% accurate to say that the solar is free. You're not paying for it. You're just paying for a cheaper rate of power. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel for more unbiased solar educational content. Like I always say, I don't sell solar but I've educated so many people through my solar YouTube ads, over two and a half billion views, that I can help connect you with a trusted installer who can send you a personalized custom design for your home. If you're open to getting a custom design, then just visit our website at solarmicroscope.com or click one of the links here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next video.